me. Father God, thank you for being a God that does provide us to be able to rest in you, to trust you, to give our hearts and our lives to you, to trust you with everything that we have. God, I pray as we've sung these songs again, Lord, that there's so much more than just songs. God, they reflect our heart towards you. And I pray, Father, that you're going to speak to our hearts and continue to share, Father, through your spoken word, the things that you want us to hear and not only hear, but then do. God, it is a crucial message this morning, and I pray that you're going to use it in a way that encourages us and challenges us. And when we walk out the doors, we'll be different because we've encountered the living Jesus Christ. Father, it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Have a seat. How are you? Okay, most of you are okay. All right. <laughs> You're here. Well, that makes you all right, right? All right. Hey, we're going to kick off our last teaching lesson in the series Vertical here in just a minute. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about um, what's going on in our country and give you an opportunity to be able to respond um, if you choose to do that. Obviously, every one of us is aware of what's taking place in um, the South, um, Texas, and what's happened, uh, the utter devastation that's taking place. It's been on the news pretty much 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we also, as a church, um, have ways to be able to help and to respond. Uh, one of the ways is um, well, we are a uh, Southern Baptist church, and we have a team within our state which is called our disaster relief team. Um, they are getting ready to, they cannot get to Texas right now. They are only open to a certain amount of re relief teams. Hopefully this next week they'll be able to give the other classes of what we call the ability to go into Texas and help. They're looking for volunteers for people to go. We have no one in our church that is disaster relief trained. Uh, we can provide that opportunity if we choose to do so. But if you have time and you're available to go down to Texas and serve meals and to minister to people, um, they will take you this time and they will train you on the spot. All right. Um, so that's a pretty cool thing. So if you've got availability to be able to go, I'm not sure how long they're going to be there, but they're going to be there a little while. I don't know what the commitment is, but I can find out all those questions. So if you're sitting here saying, you know what, I'd like to go to Texas, I would like to work with a disaster relief team, then see me, okay? Don't put it on your connection card. See me right after the service so I can get your name up to the state office also. Um, another way that we as a church can do that is we can give. Um, and we can give to disaster relief. If you put that on your envelope, I will make sure those funds get where they need to be. Um, and 100% of that will go to disaster relief. Um, or you can give to the Red Cross, many other organizations that are giving as well. And the third thing we can do as a church is we can pray. Um, and that would be something that I hope that all of us are doing. Uh, we're going to spend some time here, just a couple seconds, praying for um, those people that are in Texas. And it's hard for us to understand, um, unless you've ever seen that or been through that yourself, the utter devastation that's taken place in the Houston um, Texas area. So um, we can only see the pictures of it. We empathize with it, but people have lost their jobs. They've lost their homes. Um, people have lost their lives. And so this is a great opportunity for the church to rise up and show itself strong. Many organizations are rising up, but there's nothing like the New Testament church. Okay. And so I hope we will also be able to respond. Um, keep them in your prayers um, and again, consider what we talked about this morning. Let's pray. Father, again, um, it is just beyond me to see what's taken place in the last week um, in, the, in the state of Texas and the, the surrounding communities and the utter devastation um, that has happened. Um, as we said just a minute ago, Lord, you know by name um, the people who've lost their lives, Lord, the homes that have been totally just ruined. Um, Father, for the rebuilding of that complete community, um, it, it's not too big for you, Lord. And I thank you that you're in control. And I thank you, Father, that you're using um, uh, churches and people from not only this state, but surrounding states, Lord, to minister to the people of Texas. Um, God, I pray for them this morning. I lift them up before you. I pray, Father, that you're going to put people in their path that can somehow, some way, encourage them, um, to comfort them, and to love on them. And I pray, Father, we as a community of believers will show the true love of what Jesus is um, in and around us. Father, we're in Arizona, um, and so we're maybe a little bit distant, and it didn't happen to maybe some of our families, although there's people in this attendance this morning who, uh, whose families are and have been displaced because of the water. Um, so, Lord, we lift them up before you, but, Lord, help us to be involved. 
God, if it's just, and, and I, I say that with all the reverence, if it's just praying, Father, keep them on our mind continuously that we might pray for them. Father, if we can give, then give. And Lord, if, if there's some that can go, go. Um, Lord, and I, I, I pray that whatever we do, we do in the name of Jesus. Father, it's in his name I pray. Amen. Now, we have been in this series called Vertical for um, three weeks. We're going to finish it up this morning. So far, we've talked about knowing the will of God. We've talked about how to pray. Last week, we talked about how to give, and um, many of you have come back, so I'm glad. Um, although, I did get some feedback from last week, okay, and it wasn't all positive. Uh, somebody uh, actually said, Pastor Bob, would you please not sing to us anymore, Okay. <laughs> And so if you were here last week, you, you know what I'm talking about. But some of you have said, please don't sing. Um, stick with preaching, don't sing. And, and I, I say amen, okay? I, I, I don't like to actually um, get up there and sing, so I'll, I'll keep that in mind. But here in the next couple of weeks, we're going to start a brand new series, actually starting next week. And we're going to ask two questions, okay? The first one is, we're going to look at is, do you think God can seriously use you? See, a lot of times in our Christian walk, we think that, well, God can use people like King David, and he can use people like Paul the Apostle, or uh, Matthew, or, um, you know, he can use all these great people in the Bible, but he could never use me. And I'll disagree with that. Matter of fact, I don't believe that's true at all. And so we're, we've developed a series that uh, we're going to answer this question, and, and basically the series is called God um, Can Use Anyone, and I'm excited about it. We're going to be looking at some minor people in the Bible, uh, their stories and how God used them, and then we're going to turn around and we're going to have, I have four people coming to give their testimonies, uh, their stories, if you want to say it, of how God used them um, in, in, in light of them being them. And that's the biggest question because a lot of people think, well, God could never use me. God can't use somebody who, you know, struggles in their relationship and, and struggles with every. Yes, he can. He wants you to surrender. He wants you to be available. And, he, and God can use you in a great and mighty way. So we're going to kick that off starting next week looking at the minor character, Othaniel. All right? Anybody know who Othaniel is? You're about to find out next Sunday, okay? So nobody's heard of Othaniel. Bill? No, really? Uh-oh, I've got a stumper going. Good, he's supposed to be a minor character. You're not supposed to know anything about him. So I'm going to make up things you're not going to know, all right? And so I can, I can basically say whatever I want next week, and nobody can ever, you know, say anything about it because you don't know, all right? Anyway, let's kind of press forward. We have a memory verse to settle, don't we? Yeah, I heard the moans already, okay? Um, memory verse time, anybody, anybody say, I know it, I'll, I'll say it in front of the whole congregation. Oh boy. Anybody say, I know it, but I'm not going to say it in front of the whole congregation. Okay, I got a, a half a hand, all right. Okay, another half a hand. All right, well, we're going to have to work on these memorizing of scriptures, okay. Um, there it is, Romans um, 8, 38, and 39, um, and it talks about, again, God's love talking about that nothing can separate us from God's love, neither life nor death, right? Angels or demons, all right? Neither what? Present or future, nor any other. Then it goes height or depth or what else? Nothing, any created thing, okay? Does that include just about everything? Yeah, any created thing can separate us of the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus, all right? If you didn't memorize it, you, you, you know, you got, you got till Jesus comes back to get it done, all right? We're going to be talking about how should I share this morning, and I'm going to start off by asking you a question, and I hope that you're going to give me some answers on. What are things that, that, that you can share being a believer with other people? Uh, other things in your life that you can share as a believer with other people? People. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of keep a, a little list going here. So um, talk to me. Okay, somebody said uh, the word of God. I can share the word. Okay, I heard this one also from the back. My testimony. Oh. You can share your breakfast. You did that this morning, didn't you? I love it. Okay. There's a lot of truth to that, Bonnie Ann. A lot of truth. All right. Pastor Bob doesn't spell real well, so he abbreviates when he can, all right? Um, 
Okay, so is that your testimony? Is that what you just said, Esteli? Yeah. What did you say? Okay, you can share your life with other people, yeah. your life story. Okay, I'll put that, because that's what testimony is. Your time. I'm sorry, what? Your talent. Oh, Bonnie Ann gets another gold star. What else can you share with other people? Okay. Okay. Support, okay. I'm sorry, what? Okay. These, these things that we can share with other people, okay? It's difficult for us to share, okay? It, it, it really is hard for some of us to share. Some of us can share certain things on this list, easier than they share other things. Some people struggle with sharing, you know, money or time or the Word of God or even Jesus with other people. But yet we're very good about taking a meal over, we're very good about mowing someone's lawn, we're very good about doing other stuff. But see, as believers, we're meant to share what we have because remember from last week, the stuff that we have doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. And we're to be a good steward, again, the same word from last week, manager of what God has given us, and we're to share that with other people. But the one thing that we struggle with, if I was to circle it, okay, I, uh, you probably already know, okay, the one thing that we have a hard time sharing with people that live around us is this, Jesus. It's the hardest thing that we have to do. Matter of fact, I, I, I don't like a lot of statistics, but the, 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 you know they, they take quite a few of them, and they say that 95%, what is there, maybe a, a little over 100 here this morning, um, if we were just to say all but probably five of you, okay, all but five of you will not share your testimony, Jesus, with another person. That's 95% of us. It's interesting. Matter of fact, less than that will have an opportunity to be with somebody when they actually pray to receive Christ. They always say, you know, that you get to lead someone to Christ. I disagree with that statement completely. You don't ever lead anyone to Christ. Uh, God does that, okay? You, might, you get to be a part of it, maybe. You might be in the process, but God actually does all of that. You don't have anything really to do with that. But look, this is a serious topic this morning. Sharing Jesus with other people. Terrifying, isn't it? Don't know what to say. What if I get the wrong answer? What if he asks me a question or she asks me a question that I don't know? What if I mess it up and they go to hell because I got the wrong answer to them? See, there's all these fears, okay, about sharing Jesus and talking about who Jesus is. So we're going to discuss that this morning. Is sharing Jesus biblical? Shake your heads this way. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it definitely is biblical. We can, you know, we can find lots of places in the Bible um, that we're to share. Um, look, there's three of them that I can think of. It says, um, it says, don't let us offer through Jesus, or I'm sorry, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. Don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. 
Look at the next verse. It says, tell everyone about the amazing things he does. It does I'm going to, uh-oh, we might have to turn off all the cameras. Is God amazing? Okay, to a couple of you. That's good. All right. Is God the best thing that's ever happened to you? Okay, a, little, a few more of you. All right. Is there anybody who's given their life to Jesus? You want to, don't hold your hand up on this one. Is there anyone who's given their life to Jesus who would say, I'm disappointed in that decision. I wish I'd never done it. No. He's the, he's the best thing that's ever happened to us. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. And, and, and he's the one thing that actually took my life and I believe turned it 180 degrees in a different direction than where I was heading. Not only physically, but everything about my life has changed because of him. And, and look what it says. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The gods of, all, of other nations are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and beauty fill his sanctuary. O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize the Lord is glorious and strong. We're to tell everyone about that. The good news will be preached. Now, you may not know this, but this verse actually comes from Matthew chapter 24, and the background of this verse is important. We're talking about the end of times. Before Jesus comes back, we're to preach the good news. Oh, that's the word that gets us. Oh, well, there's only one preacher, okay? Um, that's you, Bob. You have to preach. No, that's not the right word. We're to tell everyone the good news. You know, we, we, we started a small group on Sundays, and one of the things that we're examining, um, it, it consists, I'm, I'll tell you, it, cons, it consists of pastors and their wives and the elders and their wives and the small group leaders and their uh, spouses and some significant uh, people um, who serve in our church, okay? So they're invited to this small group, and what we're looking at is, is church. We're looking at um, what is a church? What is the role of a church? Who should a church be for? And then we're talking about these strange things, and we're, we're talking about, you know, should church be for everyone? And we definitely believe it should be for everyone. Everyone should be welcome to come here. And then I ask them a question, and we're talking about our key leaders. Do you support the mission of what Oasis Church is doing? Finding, doing, and sharing. Now, you're getting a, a preview because they haven't even met today, and, and they'll get this here in just a couple of minutes. But across the board, across the board, people are happy with the finding aspect of our church and the doing aspect of our church. And the thing that we struggle with as a congregation, all of us together, the sheep, all of us, is sharing. It's the sharing aspect of going out and, and simply sharing your life with other people. And so we've got to fix that. We're going to fix it in our leadership. We're going to try to fix that amongst our church because we have to be people that want to go out and tell other people that God is amazing. All right? He's amazing. And look what he's done in my life. And he wants to do it in your life as well. Hey, we're going to do a drama here, um, here in just a couple of seconds from our um, the youth group, and uh, they're going to come and demonstrate what a little bit about what we're talking about this morning. So um, they're going to take them about two seconds to get ready, and then they're going to give us.
We are good people. We have the life. We are doing fine. We try to be loyal, obedient, loving, caring, and humble. We are good people. We have the life. We are doing fine. <laughs> What's my father's name? I don't know. And my mother's? I loved her, but that doesn't matter anymore. She abandoned me. I've been in and out of foster care since I was nine. And I turned 15 today. And instead of receiving a present, I received the worst news of my life. Marijuana, cocaine, heroin, LSD, that is a life. When I'm sad, this lifts me up. And when I'm happy, I always can celebrate the best way possible. To trip to our space. But right now, my parents are my number one enemies. I hate them. Did you say parents or say, you know what? They used to be my number one enemy too. They would always tell me, don't do this, don't do that. Don't hang around with that crowd. And they're bugging me all the time. And finally, you know what? I just left that crowd. Don't the phone, you know. And so I don't have parents and they don't have a son. But that doesn't matter anymore. So, so how old are you and what's your name? 16, but I'll be 17 soon. My name is Francisco Nunez Gilberto Jr. Damn, dude, that's a long name. Can I just call you Pancho? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pancho, well, let me tell you how it is, look. Let me tell you. And you're 16, you said? Okay, you look kind of you look young, but you're, you're tough. You're, you're okay, you're okay. So let me tell you what it is. Let me tell you what it is. Anything. Why did I kill him? Because he knew too much already, Pancho. But look, why just nobody saw you, bro? Nothing. Look, one less person in this world is a gain to us, don't you think so? <coughs> look, Kuno, look at me. I hate you and them and everybody else, even myself. We get out of this stupid game. What? Nobody gets out of this guy alive, Pancho. You knew that because we told you from the beginning. I don't care. After what I've done, I don't care about anything. Do what you want. Tomorrow, by this time, 
you and your family. You guys are going to be on the news and say, one more statistic. What is this? We are good people. We have the light. We are doing fine. Are we fine? Because we have the light. Can you see my light? No, my not shining either. And I think I know why. Covering me with sin. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. For the spirit that God gives us does not make us timid, but it gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, and ready for every good work. is very powerful because the people's lives that Nubia and the girls played are very true to the lives that we live around today. All the different things that are going on in the lives of people today that live, you, we don't have to go that far. A block this way, a block that way. And we see all these different needs that people have. And, guys, we have the answer. We have Jesus. That is the answer. That is the answer for all of everyone's needs. 
and we've been entrusted. This is, this, is the, this is the key thing. We've been entrusted to go and to make disciples. So there's some things I want to talk to you about this morning. And I know that we have a, a lot to cover. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the different points this morning. But look, if you're afraid to share, it's very normal. If you're afraid to go out and tell other people about the greatest thing that's ever happened to you, it is normal, but it can be overcome. Because of who lives within us. Look up here on the board in this passage in Matthew. And we're talking about Peter. Foot in the mouth Peter. The one that, who is going to be greatly responsible for, for starting and beginning the New Testament church. Um, look, Peter, was he ever afraid? Remember the story of Peter that before the cock crowed three times, he said that he would deny Jesus. He was afraid. He was intimidated. Are you ready for this? He was intimidated by a little girl. Kylie, Kylie's one of our uh, drama players, and, and she's probably about the age of this um, girl that went up to Peter and said, hey, Peter, aren't you one of the followers? She's pretty intimidating, isn't she? I mean, look at her. She could beat up poor old Peter. Yet Peter was afraid And yet when Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, that was a game changer. When Peter was full of the Holy Spirit, he then began to be bold in his witness. Matter of fact, he stood up in front of all the Jewish leaders. And that first day, if you want to call it, of the big church service that they had, it said that over 3,000 people came to know Christ at the end of Peter's message about Jesus. So we might be afraid, and it's normal to be afraid. Yeah, there are a lot of questions. Well, what if they don't receive my, 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 my witness? What if, if I go and I share and they, they turn me down? Look, not even Jesus had a perfect record. Matter of fact, in his earthly ministry, when Jesus shared his story, when he shared his testimony with other people, when he shared the scriptures, not everyone became a Christian. Fear is normal. So if you're here this morning, you said, man, when you even start talking about sharing Christ, I, I, oh, my blood pressure goes up, I, you know, um, all these different things. The, the, what, what, what could happen? What could happen? What could happen if we got out of the way and allowed Jesus to shine through us? Next thing I want to talk to you about is we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. You know, I'm going to try to say this as tactfully as I can, um, and, and I want you to understand something. There's nobody here um, that has this down, okay? And it's certainly not your pastor. We're all, we all came to church this morning as fallen human beings um, that need a Savior. But let me tell you something. Um, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus if we're going to share Jesus. And, and so that means for us as a congregation and for those of us that call ourselves followers of Christ, our motivation has to be Jesus. Us being obedient to him. Us wanting to go out and to make disciples, to go out and to share the good news, to, to get out of our comfort zone. I'm going to tell you something, for, for the drama team that's here, um, they, don't, they attend usually on Sunday evenings. It's uncomfortable for them to be here this morning. They don't know you. They don't know how you're going to respond. But yet they came to me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, we got this drama, Pastor. Would you come and watch it? And then if it's possible, one day in the future, could we do that for your small group leaders? I said, no, you're going to do it for the whole church. And I'm going to ask you something, Nubia, just, just tell me, were you a little bit nervous coming in this morning? Were you a little bit, you know, apprehensive this morning about coming up and standing in front of a group of people you didn't know? Yeah, a little, yeah. <laughs> well, on the, on the good side, Nubia, you're going to get more practice here in about another hour, okay? Um, so... Hey, but you know what? The more that this drama team performs and the more that they do what they do, the less nervous they're going to be about doing it. Now, somebody asked me once, they said, Pastor, do you, get do you ever get nervous, okay, before you come up there on a Sunday morning? 
My response to them is every single Sunday morning. Have you ever seen me before a Sunday morning? Yes, I get nervous. I am fearful because I believe of the importance of what we do here on a Sunday morning. I want to make sure that I'm biblical. I want to make sure that I'm relatable. I want to make sure that people understand what we're trying to communicate and go away experiencing Christ Jesus. I'm nervous about that. But I'm not going to let that nervousness stop me from getting up here and proclaiming what I believe God has told me to do. Has God told you to do? Because see, it's not the responsibility of the pastor. I'm so glad somebody said that in the drama. It's not the responsibility of the pastors in our church to be the only ones that go out and share. And even us as pastors, we need to go out and share. All of us need to go out and share. So keep your eyes on Jesus, But because if it's not... It's easy to get sidetracked. It's easy to lose the right motivation of what you're trying to do. Thirdly, I was thinking about this, and, you know, I'm just going to go through these statements, and I gave you some room to write down a few of them if you want to, maybe some that mean something to you. Sharing Jesus is a privilege, not a pain. Now, we've offered lots of different opportunities for people to come in and learn how to share their faith, and hopefully we'll have a lot more of those in the future, but it's a privilege. It's a privilege, not a pain. Look what, what it says up here. God never asked anyone to bring the lost to Christ. We are to bring Christ to the lost. See, this is where um, churches today have kind of lost the idea of what church is all about. See, we think because we're open this morning for business... That everybody's going to rush in. They don't. And basically, a lot of the ways that if you go back in your um, Christian history, the way that you found, maybe not this church, but a church, or the way you found God or God found you, was you were invited. Somebody took time to invest in you. See, we're hoping that the lost will just walk in the doors, and some do. Praise God, and some do get saved. Wouldn't the results be different if we actually went out and did what the Bible said by going out? Look at this third one. It says, um, remember who you were before you were a follower? Now, I don't really want to remember what I was like before I was a follower. Now, I wasn't totally bad, but I'm going to tell you something. I've changed a lot since i become a believer. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something, if God is amazing, like we said earlier, remember who you were, because should, that should motivate you to go out and to share with other people who Jesus is. Look, uh, um, it says the difference that Jesus has made in your life. Has Jesus made a difference in your life? The answer is yes. Remember the passion of Jesus to see people accept his mission. His message. As I keep writing, is we're to be obedient. We're, we're, we're to go out and do it because he said so. God wants to use you. You're a part of the plan. We talk about this once in a while in our, in our staff meeting. I, I wish this wasn't true. I wish he would have used some other divine method to share the gospel. Maybe billboards, maybe Twitter, maybe Facebook, whatever it is. But no, he didn't do any of that. He wants to use us. He wants us to be a part of the plan. We're going to do what we're doing has eternal, eternal ramifications. Maybe I think, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about this afternoon is maybe our prayer needs to be is, God, give us eyes to be able to see people like you see them. Wouldn't that change the way we look at people a little bit? Give us eyes to see what you're doing makes a difference when we go out and share as a church, share as individuals. Um, Jesus loves you and is alive in you and has asked you to be involved. Isn't that enough? See, we've been talking about vertical, this vertical relationship with God, and we've said this now, that we want to have a strong vertical relationship with God, and we want all the rungs in the ladder to be where they're supposed to be so we can be in a good, solid vertical relationship Look, this is one of those areas that God wants control of. Whether you're a high school student over here on the left, whether you're a high school student down here on the right, whether you're older than dirt, God wants us to be available to him to share his word, his testimony. Matter of fact, he really didn't ask us 
if we were get, really going to get cut and dry, he commanded us. And it comes back to being obedient. And if we don't do this, hear, hear this because this is really important. If we're not actively doing this in our everyday life, we're not near as spiritual as we think we are. That's a kind of a tough point. Submission makes all the difference. Surrender makes all the difference. Um, allowing him to work through you and in you. As I go through it, it has to involve us praying. Praying for those people that are around us, our family members, our friends, um, those people that we come in contact. Believe it or not, um, I heard uh, one of our elders say that we have influence over 12 other people. Um, and if that was true, if we're a, a, a size of a church of about 300, that means we have a, a influence over quite a few people. We have influence over quite a few people. We have to begin to pray about that. And it's becoming aware of their needs. Now look, let me go back over the drama real quick. Because there were several needs here. First of all, um, you had the, the righteous, okay? At least they thought they were righteous, right? We're good, we have the light, okay? Um, but they weren't sharing their light, right? Um, and then you had um, the, the young lady in the center. She had a need. She got pregnant at a party, and then you got a, a young man who feels abandoned by his family and jumps into the wrong crowd of people. And then you got the gangster. See, everybody has needs. And, and, and I hear people say, well, we, if we know people's needs, then we're going to be able to better. Do we really have to know people's needs? Because I think they're sitting right here amongst us. We don't have to go out and survey the community to find out what their needs are. I think that we're a pretty good um, testimony of what the needs of people are. We need help financially. We need help raising our kids. We need help in our marriages. We need help in just being an everyday dad and an everyday mom. We need help in being what a, a follower of Christ is. That's the needs of people that live all around us, and that's the needs of people that attend here. Lastly, it says genuinely love people. And I got a bracket up there, parentheses if you want to call it. Um, look, we got to genuinely love people the way Jesus loved people. Got to love people the way Jesus loved people. So what does this mean practically for us? Well, hmm. I got a couple minutes left, and um, our worship team can come back up. We're gonna we're gonna be done in just a second. But I want to challenge you in a couple of things because there's um, there's two ways I want to challenge you. We're starting a brand new teaching series right next week. What a great week to to invite someone to come to church. And and someone told me, well, I don't have anything in my hand that I can give someone else that tells them about our church. Well, we had printed 500 of these, and I'm not gonna. I didn't put them in your bulletins. You know why? Because really, honest, can I be honest? I didn't want to pick them up after you left, okay? Um, so I'm going to put them out on the table. And what it has, this is, it's pretty cool. It's got all of our service times on there, um, the morning services, the afternoon services, when we have children's services, and on the back of it, it says God can use anyone. And you can give that to them. This is not difficult. This is the beginning. You know, and I know I'm the pastor, and, uh, you know, but really watch, it, it's not hard. Now, I know you're all taking it just because you're in church, right? And, and actually, if I was actually going to do that, um, people, it, it's amazing when we're in, you know, when we've been in different places. If you just go like this a lot of times and hold it up, people will take it. Now, some people will not, okay? I'm one of those. I will not, okay? Um, but anyway, here, this is an invitation to our church. Hope that you'll join us. Now, that's one way, and, and it's not the most friendly way, Okay? Um, but it's a way. I'm going to put these cards out here. If you want to take them, help yourself. I'm hoping today, um, there's 500. I'm hoping when we leave today after all three services that there will be none left. I want to talk to you about an opportunity coming up in October, one of those wild dreams that we have here. Um, October 28th, we're going to have a family movie night. Um, it's going to be out here on the grass. It's probably going to be one of our only ones out there on the grass this year. We're going to try to move our movie nights out into the parks again. Um, but it's, this is going to be the first one of the year. Okay? I have a goal. I have a goal. I have two goals, actually. 
we're going to keep track for the next, starting in about two weeks, we're going to keep track of the number of people that we invite as individuals, okay? And on your connection card, when you come in, it's going to say, I invited eight people to the movie night. Great. My goal as a church is for us to invite 1,000 people. Now, I'm not worried about whether they come or not. I want us to get out and to do what we're supposed to do by inviting the people that are in our circle of influence. I'm not asking you to go to strangers, I'm at, and I'm not asking, uh, just people you know. And, and, and think about that. There's, there, at the end of the service today, and the next service, and the following service in the evening, we're going to have 300 adults. We're not counting children. There'll be 300 adults that will attend our services today. That's us asking the what? Three and a what? Uh, three and a quarter person? If everyone handed out three and a quarter invitations, we would reach that 1,000 contacts. Now, my goal is to see if we can get 500 people here. Okay, that's my goal. And, and that's going to help us, all right, help us go out and start investing in people. I hope that's what we're, you see, it's not about us becoming a bigger church. It's not about, it's about us going out and sharing the love of Jesus. We have a big evening planned that evening. That we're gonna, it's going to have, you know, it's a very, uh, I think we're having a pumpkin decorating contest and all the different things that we're going to do on that evening to have some entertainment when people are here. But really, church family, I'm challenging you. I am, I'm asking you to be involved. Please don't leave that up to Pastor Mark, Pastor Bob, Pastor Manuel. Please don't do that. Let's us go out and invest in our community. Now, here's our next steps. Maybe you need a heart change. Maybe you need to remember something that we talked about. Maybe you need to ask God to, um, to help you to share life with others. And for those of you that are using Right Now Media, here's another one of those trainings. Last week, I asked you to do the Treasure Principle by Randy Alcorn. This week, I'm asking you to do Sharing Faith by Pete Briscoe. Okay, and what is it going to talk about? God changing our hearts so that we'll have a desire and a want to go out and share with other people. It's an important part of our walk with Christ. Let's pray. Father, thanks for our morning. Thank you for who you are. God, I pray that you would show yourself so amazing in our life that we would be forced to have to go out and tell other people about it. You never meant for the church ever, Lord, to be just all about itself. The church was to go out and to, to make disciples. So would you change our hearts? Would you change my heart over that? Would you give us an ability, a renewed desire of wanting to go and to um, just to invest in people? God, that skit, with the, it's, it, we don't have to. That's a drama that we put on in church, but the drama is really outside the doors. And people all around us need the light. And God, you have called us the church, to be actively involved in that. So, Father, I confess, I repent. I ask you to forgive us, Father. But, Father, I also pray that we will be busy about doing what you've asked us to do in fulfilling the scriptures in this area of sharing. And it's in Jesus' name I pray.